G'day everyone, Master Rabbit here from CapturalComputers.com.au uh, Today we're going to be going through another CC Indie Spotlight um, episode where we're going to be running through a few bits and pieces gameplay um, chapter for, from um, Shadowrun Returns a harebrained schemes production um, they're the guys that make it and I'll be walking you through taking you through a few things uh, one episode to tell you the truth probably just like one extra like a like level um, somewhere between not from the beginning of the game but somewhere in between the game so hopefully it won't give you too much of a spoiler um, so that's pretty much the the um, gist of what's going to happen today uh, so Shadowrun as you prob as people might know it ha is a classic game that started off in a kind of board game style RPG style game um, but then it moved over onto different platforms like you know the Super Nintendo which was probably one of the most famous popular ones which I really thoroughly enjoyed and it finally got remade again and here we are so um, <clears throat> I'm gonna walk you through uh, a chapter that I'm actually currently running um, on now so I'm gonna jump straight in after I've done that then we can uh, check out a few other things so I'm gonna click on the load and select my character I've got two different type of characters. I've just started one which I was just playing around with and this is the one where we're going to be jumping in right now which is um, uh, pretty much the main game, the story of the game which is called Dead Man's Switch. Um, the good thing about this um, is that Hairbrain Scheme guys have developed a level editor which is pretty much if you want to call it a level editor but you can actually create an entire game story um, from the level editing tools which you can you know really really if you really want to you can go into so much fine detail um, which which is really good and a lot of people are even trying to or there's one particular you know group of people that are actually trying to uh, start or re to recreate the Super Nintendo version of Shadowrun which is fantastic uh, and we hope to you know, I personally hope to see that actually up and running probably in the near future but for now, um, we've got this, and the you know the single player experience of this is um, has been pretty interesting. Uh, I can I the only thing I would probably say is I, I wish you know this is just a wish, but you know don't forget this is an indie game, and a lot of you know there's been a, it's gone through a whole lot of work that needed to be done. But the only thing I would probably would have suggested would be to have voiceover, and voiceover would have been perfect for this sort of situation for this sort of game because there's so much reading. Uh, and it's great. It's good to see, um, but because you know, there's lots of story and it's very well, uh, very well designed and written. Um, but that would have been perfect if we had a bit of uh, voiceover. But it doesn't matter. It's all good. Um, reading doesn't hurt. So anyway, we're at um, a location in the game called Returning to the Docks. So a, f a few things were ha a few things happened, uh, and now I'm back with a team of four, and one of them is uh, someone that's part of the storyline, named Shannon. And uh, Shannon needs to contact um, some, what do you want to call it, hard to say, some spirits to find out what's going on and what happened to her brother uh, and because she's a shaman and she'll be able to provide that sort of information to you. But before we do that, we need to um, make sure that we, you know, we've got to take out the enemies and have a fight you know, fight through um, you know, the level to get to that point. So at the moment, uh, as you can see, this is my character. Uh, it's uh, you know name's Master Rabbit. He is an adept. Now they're pretty much strong. They're, they're very powerful with uh, pretty much fighting uh, without any uh, weapons in their hand. Normally, you know, of course, with Shadowrun, there's so many different characters you can choose from. Um, I personally, I'm stuck with uh, kind of. I, I enjoy playing with the monk, but I've, I've made a, a few modifications to him as well. Like I got him to use the jacking ability, uh, which is you know where he can hack into stuff. Uh, and he's got some spells and he's got some other things as well down here. This is the inventory that you can do that you can use when you start start off. But then I've also got other characters. Um, as you can see here, this is Shannon. Shannon's got like a special, just particular standard weapon and plus skills, uh, haste, which makes you go faster, and mana bolt, powerful magic. Uh, so, and also these are the two, uh, if you want to call them shadow runners, that I hired for this mission. Uh, now this guy is uh, pretty good with weapons, 
and so is this one. So I pretty much wanted to take two run two two powerful gunners with me because I'm an adept, and we've got a uh, semi, if you want to call it, shaman magician uh, along with me. So let's jump into the game. Alright, so you can also spend karma points. Karma points, if you want to call them, are like skill points to experience points, similar to that style. If you want to, it's hard to explain, but it's it, it is similar like to to experience points. Once you level up, you get skill points, if you want to call it. And with that, you can use them to add attributes. So as you can see up the top, you've got body, uh, strength, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, quickness. Um, so as you can see up the top, uh, you can start with body. Well. Uh, body is, as you can see there, is physical damage that you can take, uh, and I'm playing as a troll. So for me, I can take the troll level all the way up to level 17, but like there are different max caps. So for example, this one here is a maximum that a human or an elf can go to, same as for dwarfs, then you've got orcs, and then you've got troll. So as you can see, a troll would be very, very powerful and hard to take down, um, but then if you think about it, he's not going to be as quick. As you can see right there, he stops at 8, but then you've got like elves can go up to 12, up to 11, so different things, you know, like everyone's got a, uh, weaknesses and strengths. So um, as you can see here, I've got 3 points of allocation, if I wanted to I could add that one right there and that will increase my quickness. Um, then of course you've got different type of combats, you've got your ranged combat, your pistols, different power abilities with different type of weapons, so uh, you can use like SMG, shotgun, rifle, as you can see there's a lot of replayability in this game because if you think about it, I'm, I'm playing as a monk, if you want to call it like an adept, you know, call it a monk, unarmed combat, so all these things here I really don't want, I can't take advantage of and I can't and I really don't want to for this character, but I can always come back and you know replay it with a different character which um, you know I can take advantage of and really you know fully enjoy. So therefore, as well, you know, we've got dodge part of the quickness ability, so that will actually help me, um, as you can see, re reduce the amount of hits I can take physically. Uh, and this is one of the most important. This is you know important for a troll, especially with an adept. Uh, these are the melee attacks that I can use uh, for strength, close combat, which is also very important for me because if I, you know, I'm going to be going in uh, with my hands only, uh, as you can see. Uh, I haven't chosen the melee because melee is the weapons, but then I've also ch I've, I've chose here the unarmed unarmed combat. Uh, unfortunately, I can't use I, I want to use this one here, but I can't get it can't get it yet. I've given myself four points, which as you can see, there's a line a, th a thin blue line that goes down, uh, and that will pretty much show you uh, that okay I've played I've used this much, which is four up here in close combat, and that will allow me to unlock this. Now I won't be able to unlock five unless I can unlock five there. So that's how it works. Um, throwing, intelligence, this really comes in handy if you want to jack into things, which I've actually given myself a bit of experience on. So this is um, something that I used to do with the original Super Nintendo version, was I was I, I loved jacking in and hacking into stuff. So this is uh, one thing that I've wanted to do even with my adept. Um, so I got myself an enhancement, I went in there and added myself as, uh, you know, I got the, the what do you want to call it? Like I went in and added that jack into my head, that added that gave me this extra skill, uh, and there it is. So basically, I can add. I've given myself that much, and plus I've gone down to here, so I can equi equip the uh, craft work. Uh, a, what do you want to call it? Jacking, hack, hacking, jacking tool, uh, which is a decker. So I've given myself that, and hopefully with that, I'll have some fun and you know down the track and also use that to, to hack into stuff and open stuff and get stuff. And, and all that kind of things. All right, so uh, you know, there's a whole lot of different things. We can stay in here forever going through them. Willpower as well is also very important for spell casting for myself because I've got cheap power. And at the moment, I've got two different types. I've got the uh, um, what do you call it? The equipped hand killing, uh, the resistance to magic and spells. Then I can also, if I wanted to right now, I can add that. But I've got to buy this skill. So these things have to be bought. Um, and yeah, so these are other other things as well. Charisma comes in handy for uh, for being for a shaman. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to do any of this stuff here. Uh, conjuring as well. All right, so that's enough. I've really gone through, and I probably hopefully maybe ho hopefully haven't bored you guys to, de to tears. Um, but yeah, let's just jump through and continue on. All right, so this is a story mode. As you can see, Shannon is the character that I've got to keep alive in this chapter. 
and she's pretty much talking and she's basically said that we've showed up here that there's a few other people here we've got to take advantage of the situation um, so there, here are the options like for example you know this is an RPG style um, you know choose your own you know scenario situation thing everything in the end sooner or later gets you know rounds up and goes to the end of the you know goes ends up in the same place but you've got different ways of act, you know talking to people you can be rough nice and people react to you in different ways so anyway I can just pretty much say you know, it shouldn't be much of a problem okay so therefore what we've got to do is um we've got to make our way through back into the warehouse so the Lone Stars are here, they're dead, and we hope we have a better shot than they are. So we'll continue on. Alright, so as you can see, mission objectives will come up, keep Shannon alive, and break into the NTSB warehouse. Alright, so I've already been in here, this is part of the mission. I've come here before, and um, as you can see, uh, uh, we've got to make our way back. Now I'm just scrolling with my mouse in and out, so you can see you can zoom in and out. Now I can use the keyboard keys. To, to move around and check out a few of them, a bit of the map. Now, the only thing I also wanted to say was that the map would have been great. Um, and the thing is, it's not very big, but it would be nice to have like a, maybe a little mini map in the corner of the screen to show you where you are. It doesn't show you that, and you just gotta, you know, gotta walk around and find it. And, and the thing is, they're not very big. The maps are not very, very big anyway. All right, so um, the guys follow me around because at the moment we're in th free roaming. So whatever I do, these guys come around with us. As you can see, the maps maps are very nicely and well well designed. A um, lot of detail um, shows that steampunk feel um, and everything, so it's really nice. Like it's, it's, I have to say. All right, here we are. Now I don't know who this guy is, but we'll see we'll soon. See, here we go. Huh? All right, so this is the scrawny guard. You there? This block is off limits. There's, uh, we've got a gas leak in the docks here. No loitering. Alright, so this guy seems like, you know, legit. <laughs> As you can see, this guy here doesn't look like one of the hired mercenaries. Alright, so now, different forms of communication. Now, uh, you have something to say. He basically says, hey, uh, you even listening? Get out of here. Alright, so then you've got options of talking. Now there has been an update not long ago which actually allows you to select some uh, a type of chat etiquette. Uh, now if you have a specific etiquette selected and you for example selected the one that's not selected for me um, is Shadowrunner etiquette. Now if you have the Shadowrunner etiquette or the corporate etiquette you can actually use one of these and that could be to your advantage. Um, but unfortunately because um, I got this game very early on and I've already use this character that I've got now, uh, that option wasn't available. But if when I created a new character, that option was available and I could have chosen like for example Shadowrunner or Street uh, Street Smarts Etiquette and all that sort of stuff. But at this moment in time I've only got two options to choose from and one is I'm not leaving or I'm not here for you, just let me through. So I'm going to just go for this one. Look guy, uh, I'm, I'm not going to probably read everything but you guys can probably see the, get the gist of it. I'm going to leave it up on the screen just for a little bit, so therefore you can see what's going on, so you can understand a bit of the storyline, uh, and then I'll just move on. Alright, so he's going to go off to tell his friends. Now, we're in combat mode. That was quick, didn't take too long. Alright, so as you can see now, he's hidden behind uh, this barricade. Now, the barricade, they all come in handy, these things. They're actually very, very smart the way it's done. Uh, that if you hide behind a barricade, you get a, a 90%, like for example, percentage of, you know, what do you want to call it, cover. If you're out in the open, this guy's going to shoot you. Easy, because you know, you're out in the open. Um, but if you got, got hide behind the barricade, like right now, as you can see, I put the mouse over here. Uh, see a little shield up here, meaning that I can actually sh uh, hide behind that barricade, and I won't get hurt. Now, um, the second part is that, I'll scroll out a little bit. Because uh, I'm in charge right now. This is Master Arab is playing here. Uh, this is the area that I can move around. As you can see, I'm just going to move around. See, so, okay, this is f this is the sec first section of my move. Now, if I that's that takes one turn, and then when I move into the next section, that takes two turns. As you can see, the two, and that's the one. Then next to the circle there, there you can see where the circle is. That's one turn. That's two turns. 
Now I can take a two turn move and attack him because I can take two turns. Or I cast myself, you know, cast magic if I wanted to, and that would take one turn, and then I'll lose my turn and I won't be able to go any further. But for this situation, let me go and attack him. So I'll just click on him. Basically, simple attack. Click. I'll run over. Hit him for six damage. My turn's over now. Alright, so now the next characters take over. So we've got Shannon. Shannon can't do much, but I can go there and see if I can sh I can shoot her. I can try and attempt to shoot her from here. There you go. Got a critical and got a hit. Missed. Now I can do it again. From that distance, it's like actually very lucky that I hit him. Alright, so with this other Shadow Runner, I can probably bring him up to here. Hopefully, we're able to get a shot in here as well. No, couldn't. Alright, so I can probably get, move this guy up maybe up to here. And get a shot in, hopefully. Otherwise, this guy will take, an, take a shot on me. There you go, perfect. Okay, so that was the end of that mini round battle. So, it's a very simple. Um, and not too complicated, as I said, there's different characters, different characters have abilities and you'll see them, I'll, I'll show you, like, of course, down the track. And there's other things you can do, like throw grenades, take health health, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, once a, an attack, one, once a, you know, section of fighting stops, it goes back into free roaming. So, as you can see, a really nice detail with uh, this area design. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll just show you the area a little bit and then we'll make our way into the warehouse. That thing on the, the thing on my back is the jacking tool, the decker, if you want to call it. Alright, we'll go back, we'll go into the warehouse. Here come the enemies. The warehouse is over here where the mouse was. Alrighty, here they are. Now, where I am at the moment, I can get two attacks in on this guy if I wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast magic on myself, really. So here it is here. I'm going to go to select this. Select that, which is killing hands. Adept. App 1. Cooldown 6. Alright, so here I can actually become... My, well, of course, my weapons become lethal weapons. My hands become lethal weapons. For for four rounds, increasing, the, increasing my damage by 10 hit points. So select... So as you can see, his hands are kind of ooh, ready, 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 meditating, and then clicking myself. All right. So now I've be I've given myself killing hands, which gives me plus ten damage. So I've just had I've had one turn, and I can still go and attack him for my second turn. There you go. Now it's giving me plus eight damage. As I said, it's not the best, but you know, what can you do? All right. So I'm going to move myself. As you can see, that line of sight. Hopefully, straight to that one. Alright. Shannon's hiding. Take a shot. Missed, even from that distance. Disaster. Alright, let's go here. Bring this guy in closer and take a shot. Wow. That's a disaster. Let's go here. Hopefully, I can get a shot. This guy should have been dead by now. Wow. Alright. This guy's going to come in from this other angle, which is uh, in a way good. Don't know where this guy's going. That was funny. He completely ran away from me. Alright, anyway, I'm going to get Master Rabbit, run over to him. Nice. Hit him for 15. Alright, so maybe I can just get Shannon to shoot from here, hopefully get him. Alrighty, he's dead. Um, and as you can see down here, Shannon's got like, for example, the amount of weapons, or if you want to call it, turns before she has to reload this weapon here. Uh, and, uh, and as you can see, there's different uh, damage, cap, range, medium, and bullets type. Uh, there, as you can see, if I can uh, break this open, I can cast a mana bolt, a powerful magic bolt that ignores normal armor and targets willpower. Uh, here, haste, which would be perfect to run with Master Abbot because Master Abbot, if you want to call it an adept monk, it would make it even harder, it would make him go crazy. So that would be awesome, but we'll just probably use it when we go inside. Alright, so that would be it. For example, if I didn't want to do anything else with Shannon, I could just stop her turn by clicking end. Okay. And here are some more enemies. It's fantastic. So here comes Master Rabbit. Let's take him around the corner here. Hit him for eight. Shannon can take a shot at this guy here. And then these guys can also take a shot too. So what we'll do is maybe move him over here. Take a shot from there. 
Alright, these guys can probably come in, probably shoot him from here, hang on. Can you get him? Yes. Two missed. Amazing. Alright, so let's maybe move this guy over here. Can we get a better shot from this angle? Nice. Alright, so that's good. This guy is casting magic. Hit me for eight. That's bad. Alright. Let's go get him. Wow, hit him for 23 damage. That's nice. Alright, so now as you can see stuff on the ground, um, pick up. Now I would recommend that you need to, and you should, pick up stuff while you're in battle because what I've noticed is that once the battle ends, um, that stuff disappears. So let's go back and get it for Master Rabbit. Alright, picked up the NTBS Warehouse key. Oh, well that looks like it's part of the mission anyway. So it looks like this is the key, picked it up. So that is... Um, there still seems like there's more characters around, otherwise... Ooh. We've got a Shadow Runner here, Line of Sight has been blocked. Alright, so, let's hide behind this wall, just to be on the safe side that it doesn't get, we don't get hit. Let's end, let's end our turn, let them come to us. One let us... Go down one more. No, I'm gonna leave Master Rabbit here. And let's take the next person, Shannon. Let's take this guy down. See if you can shoot them from this angle. You can't. We'll bring him down. Bring him down to the next line. Okay. Let's bring this guy down too. Really don't want Master Rabbit out in the open because this guy's probably gonna shoot him. Or hide behind this wall. Get Shannon to do the same. She probably show here. It's probably his turn. Seems like this guy's asleep. We should have had his turn by now. Must have been asleep. We must have got him by surprise. All right. It's not going to hurt. Better for us, really. Okay, he's nearly dead. So let's maybe let's take this guy down to here. Still got another shot. Nice. And bring this down to here. Alright, take a shot. Didn't die. This is amazing. I'm a bit confused and concerned that these guys are meant to, should be attacking, but they're not. Which is very, very, very weird. Anyway, he's down. Alright, so that was the last of the enemies. As soon as the last Merc hits the ground, the dock becomes eerily silent. So it's nice and quiet. So, now we can go into um, the warehouse. As you can see, this is... Um, another like a level change map um, button this doesn't appear until things happen like story missions happen or whatever so that's it for this section and as you can see there was a bit of action happening pretty disappointed in uh, the enemies not wanting to attack but what can you do all right so let's go inside didn't take too much damage really all right so we're about to transition to a new location basically what I just said this ha when this happens this mission or this section will end so let's continue on. It'll load, of course, give you a bit more information of what's going on. So we're now in the spirit talk location. So inside here, we're pretty much going to be talking to, Shan's going to be talking to the dead uh, to find out what happened to her brother who got murdered. All right, so that is the information right here. If you want to quickly read through it, you can see what happens. Okay. So you notice that basically at the bottom you notice in the shift her focus has returned to the present. She nods to you and she can sense the spirits in her face in, in this place. Alright, so here we go. Now you need to just find them. Alright, so this could possibly be um less battle, more story. But no, there'll be some fighting here. Alright, anyway, objection would keep Shannon alive, defeat the runner crew. And game has automatically been saved. There's an optional as well. Find the Hey, data, the runners are after. Alright, so there are optional quests, if you want to call it, uh, when you go in to do certain missions. So, for example, um, this top left hand corner that I've got the yellow arrow, meaning that's where I've got to go. So, for example, like down here somewhere, who knows? But uh, that's where it's pointing me to. Uh, but if I click on this, it brings up the sub menu. I've got 3,800 dollars which is great 
But as you, uh, here we've got the objectives. Summon the spirit, defeat the runner crew, keep Shannon alive. Here, the optional quests. Find the pay data. And here is what we saw in the loading screen. So if you wanted to, you could read that again. If you needed to, you could. Uh, and then you've got the mission items. Now mission items are pretty much what you've picked up during the game. Not all just in this section here, but as you can see the last one I saw, which is the NTSB warehouse key. That was the one that got us into the game, into this section here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, of course the question mark will basically take us back and show you and give you examples of what everything does and who it is and what's going on, the glossary and all that stuff. Not going to bore you with that. Now, the other, other two things I wanted to show you are, well, of course, this is the one where I can actually change my skills. If I wanted to, I can add more stuff to my skills if I needed to. Uh, and I've got seven karma now. So that actually, uh, before I only had um, three. Got an extra four. And here is the ammo and stuff like that. Uh, weapons and inventory, cyberware, which I was basically telling you before. That's the data jack that I included into my head uh, to allow me to, to use the decker to do all that stuff. So that's what I've got equipped it. And that's it. So that was the only thing I quickly wanted to show you. Jump back out. Alright, so now, here they are. Let's start, uh, let's take these guys out and take it from here. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cast magic on me again. Should be able to take this guy out from here. Fingers crossed. Yep. Didn't see me, didn't see me coming. Alright. So what I should do this time, I think, with Shannon, I'm going to get Shannon to cast her haste on me. There you go. My haste has increased. Oh, my attacking... Oh, I'll be going faster, that's I'll tell you that now. There you go, it gave me an extra turn. Alright, so now this guy... I'm calling them guys because they're just hired mercenaries. I'm not doing too much. I'm doing, they're not doing too well. All right. So, okay, this guy. We need to get rid of these guys before we can summon the spirits. Yes, Shannon. We know. We know. Uh, and as you can see, I've just moused over Master Abbott. As you can see, he's got plus killing hands and plus haste, which is AP one two. So that means I get an extra turn, sort of thing. All right. So that is that. Uh, now I can move these guys behind that wall. Get him a bit of cover. Okay, that guy just took a shot at me. And he just ran. Here's another one. Wow, look at this guy. Alright, so now Master Abbott can go and attack this guy. As you can see, if you if you want to call it, he's a tank. Uh, which is good, because... It does a lot of damage. Three attacks, this guy. Amazing. Amazing. Which is fantastic. Now, with Shannon as a... Uh, as a buffer, if you want to call it. Come in handy. So, I wonder if we can shoot this guy from here. Too far away. It's like really, really gives the the percentage of hitting. So you can see, 26% chance of hitting him. Ah, hit him. Not bad. All right, so let's bring this guy down, probably behind this wall. Mm, probably can't get him from that distance. Oh, not bad. Pretty good. All right, here we go. <laughs> Look at that. They actually shot. That's actually good to hear. So at least we know the the, the, the well, as I said, the, I, I really haven't noticed too much of it, but it seems like the earlier stages, the uh, AI were a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, these guys are a little bit less quiet, or a little quiet, but hey, I'm not going to complain. Alright, one hit, two hit, this guy doesn't want to die. And three hit. i got to say, Master Ab is doing a good job. Alright, so let's go here, uh, let's keep Shannon behind the wall. There's one more, there's another guy over here. We can probably hit him from here. Try. Missed. Shannon's not very good at attacking, I can just say now. But hey, it's not bad. It's better than nothing. Alright, so let's get this guy out. Probably put him over here. His turn's already ended. Um, it's good to keep him behind behind stuff, you know. In my honest opinion, it's just sometimes if you might want to waste a turn just to prepare him and get him in a, get him in a position where they don't die. I am very... Oh, there you go. Finally got this guy to attack. He's an adept, so he's like Master Rabbit. So keep going, Shannon. Awesome, nice critical. Miss from this angle. Come on. Excellent. He's dead. So this guy is going to take on the. He's he's a what is it, orc shadow runner. 
Nice. Alright, he nearly dead, nearly dead. Ooh, tried to shoot at me with a shotgun and missed. You're bad. I'm gonna come fix you up now. And hopefully, wow. Oh, that's right, my, my haste is finished. Shannon, see if she can shoot him from here. Oh, darn, Shannon. Good stuff. Alright, dead. Alright, but no, as you can see, it's still um, not free roaming. So therefore, I gotta keep on walking around, which could potentially take a long time to do. So, for example, if we end our turn, and. Oh, uh, no, hang on. No, I've still gotta walk around. Let's go down this way. Alright, let's go down this way here. Seems like the music stopped, the actual, or the action movie stopped. Which was, um, interesting. But, we're still in, fr you know, in turn-based fighting. Which is weird. So the music stopped. Okay. Well, let's keep on going. Alright, we've got two, okay, so we've got two different ways of going through here. Uh, we're gonna go through here, there's probably gotta be some bat, there's gotta be a fight down there. And there's also a door here which we're gonna, we, we, we could have gone through. And that's pretty much a dead end. There's a whole lot of area in here, so let, let's, let's, um... Yeah, there you go. There is a mission objective here somewhere. As you can see, that circle. Oh, that square, sorry. Um, to tell you the truth, we'll go back this way. Go back this way. Bring Master Rabbit all the way to the door. It's weird. There's no one to fight, but we're still in this mode, in this mode, which is a, a little bit annoying. Take a bit more time to get through where we have to go. Let's see if we can get this guy to the door. Yep, we can open the door. There's probably going to be a fight in this area. Maybe not. Oh, it probably will be. I'll hide behind the wall just in case. Interesting. Now we can mouse over things, like for example we can see if there's anything of importance. So, mousing over stuff really at the moment, oh, no, no, doesn't really show anything. Some, and what happens most of the time is that when something of interest does appear it flashes, but not like that, but it's kind of like in a circle-y sort of flash, oh it's just a flash thing, it doesn't seem like it's doing it at the moment, so... Seems like this room was probably a waste of time and I shouldn't have, shouldn't have gone in. I th actually thought there would have been something in here, but it seems like there's nothing in here. Alright, so let's just jump back out. Let's go back to where probably we're supposed to be going. Okay. As you can see next to the characters' names is like two, meaning that it's got two turns to get to where he's got to go. Uh, I won't open the door. I'll just wait. Get everybody in here, get them prepared. It's a bit weird though, to tell you the truth. I sh this shouldn't have happened really. Sorry about uh, the delay of uh, getting into the action again. Alright, let's get Master Abbott up to the door. Get Shannon to hide behind this door. Okay, the music's back. So that means there's got to be some fun happening here. Here we go. Someone's here. Wow, shot me from that distance. Good stuff. Alright, now these guys are a bit more active. Yes, okay, I gotta be very careful here. I don't want half these guys to die. So let's take the edit, and I'll take this guy. Turns over, re ended. Now. Alright, one guy down. Nice. 
Wow, that got really bad aim. Oh, damn. That was not what I wanted to see. We got us in a very good position. We're all stuck in one place. That's bad. Um, what can you do? Alright, I'm gonna go get this guy here because he's a bit of a pain. Throw that grenade. My turn has ended there. Now, everyone seems like they're in pretty good shape anyway, so they're not gonna die. Okay, keep on going. Doing a pretty bad job here. Oh good, at least he's dead. He took a shot, missed, great. Alright, so I got two shots of this guy now. One, and... Ah, close, no cigar, not good enough. Alright, let's bring Shannon in closer. Bring in El Deuce, um, just probably up to here so you he can have a shot. Alrighty, okay, so objective here uh, defeat the runner crew and keep Shannon alive. So Shannon's done it now. Now Shannon's gone off to do, I think, what she wants to do, I think, we'll, which will be probably to contact the dead. Now, free ramming is back, and I'm gonna take this before it disappears. The Aces flight recorder, optional, find the pay data for... Okay, so that was well, pretty much standard. That's another thing that didn't disappear, uh, which is good. Um, Alright, so that was the optional stuff. Now, that stuff, as I said, uh, will appear probably... Where is it? Yeah, here in the uh, mission items. Now, this is the... This stuff here could be worth some money. Now, basically what happens is after this mission ends, you go back You go back to your like your location, you know, where your joint uh, stuff is, this uh, seamstress thing, like, uh, I think it's a, it's like a bar. Uh, and there, there's a guy who's like a fence. He sells shit, picks up stuff, and, uh, and gives you money, best prices, and stuff like that. And that's what you can do with this, uh, that's what you can do with that. So with that, you're gonna, you, you can make a bit of cash. Um, Alright, so that's with me, Master Rabbit. Now, we can run around. Uh, Shannon will be there. She's not going to go anywhere. She's ready to contact the dead. But before we do that, we can go off and search a few places. There probably will not be any more fighting. So you guys now have seen what the fighting's all about. And how it works. Uh, so we can just go around and check to see if there's anything worthwhile to steal or pick up. And it looks like there isn't, really, I think. We don't know. Let's have a quick look. So, mousing over stuff. Waiting for a flash. Sometimes, you know, like they flash a little bit just before they, um. Just to let you know that there's something to pick up. Uh, no, nothing here at all. Bit of a disappointment. Alright, so we can go all the way back. We can just go put our cursor right there. And we will speed run. As you can see, look at It's running fast, 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 fast. Here we are. That was quick. Alright, so this area here must be the last section of this chapter, if you want to call it. So we just click on Shannon. Here we are. Objective has been completed. We summon the spirit. I will now summon the spirit. Alright, so here you go. Shannon is summoning the spirit. We can zoom in a little bit closer. There's not much zooming to be involved. Alright, so here is the Forgotten Souls click. Oh, that's fuck creepy. Alright, so, the air grows cold, the spirit of the dead children. Anyway, so you can read here. I'll read it just quickly to myself. You guys can have a quick look too. Okay. Alrighty, so next question here is where we can ask some questions. Alright, so here we're going to ask, show the first magical fetish uh, to the spirits. Okay, we no longer see the world of flesh seeker, only the essence of auras of living things. Words though, words may echo through the veil and sometimes, sometimes we may hear them. So pretty much what we're going to be doing here is going to be asking questions about um, the killer. 
So hopefully these forgotten souls can help us. So anyway, here you go. Just breathe, breathe through it quickly. Okay, show a second uh, magic fish. Okay, so between the elf and the troll lay remains of a man whose sister now chants us for justice. Alright, search the spot where the victim's body was found. So we need to go back to the location where the person died. So the elf in the essence and remain of that. Man died somewhere, has been left behind, a small part of him perhaps. Okay, so show we can do that one. Spirit, can you tell us any more? So we can also just go with the third one. Okay. Right, so this is something that's happening where the spirits have taken over. Okay, here's the elf. You idiot! Okay, the elf and the troll. Something co something bad's going on here. So that's what happened. Ask one more question. Okay. They need they leave. They've given us a bit of information which I believe I know and you guys probably wouldn't because this, we're jumping in halfway through the game sort of thing. Okay. Alright, here we are. Alright, so pretty much now uh, different options we can choose from. He will be uh, he will be once we find his killer. We can't get mu we can't get much more than death. Uh, he is free now. Uh, we are free. We what we do now? We do for living. We can choose any of these things. It doesn't make you know. It doesn't make too much difference. It all depends on how much how how you want to approach approach the answers to this. Correct. Okay, so now what we've got to do is go back to where her brother died, which is all the way up over here. Everyone's back in the crew again, as you can see they're all following me. As That's the location of where he died, so we can run all the way back. Picking up what we need. We found the evidence. Search the spot where the victim died. Return to this. Uh, this there you go. The seamstress union. All right. So we've done everything here. We've gained eight karma, uh, which is like we leveled up, sort of. But it's like we now done something. We've got the skill points. There's no real level up, as you know, as you can see. But yeah, once you finish certain things, you get your level up and you get your skill points, which is the karma. Alright, so as you can see, Shannon now has got something to say, and um, uh, brother's killer. 
No, she scrolls. Ah, okay. Um, now we can see what we can do here. Is it enough to, tar uh, to target a spell? Can you track him with that? Uh, you and your friends practice. Okay, so pretty much we can say, is that enough uh, to target enough to target a spell? Okay. 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 So now, so pretty much the only option I've got. Okay. Right, so I can be nice. I'll just choose this one. Alright, so that is it. That is the end of this section. Now, as you can see, I can go back here and that will end the mission. And that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go through there and, and end the mission. Uh, everyone else is here. Uh, and they're going to follow me back. And there was nothing else in those other rooms. So we can make it to the end. Once, this, once you do this, it'll basically ask you the same question as before. You're about to transition to a new location. Continue and confirm. And that is the. This is where I'm going to end. Uh, basically, uh, of course, this will take us back into the stream, uh, the seamstress union, which is, as I was explaining to you guys before, what the uh, like your safe house. This is like where you go and do stuff after, or sell shit, buy stuff, upgrade yourself, and all that sort of stuff. So this is where I'm going to just quickly. Uh, I'll just continue on because it needs to save so I'll go on and jump into here and this is where I'll end the um, the the indie spotlight uh, walkthrough so find someone who can help analyze their, their DNA so okay so that's pretty much it uh, I'm not gonna go any further and I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini walkthrough um, from a specific chapter in the game which hopefully didn't give you too much of uh, if you want to call it spoiler uh, and we hope you really enjoyed uh, listening and you know, following me through. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Uh, but I can say it is a very interesting and fun remake of the original Shadowrun, which um, I personally have been uh, have enjoyed very, very much. Uh, so um, with that, thank you for listening to and listening while well, listening and watching another episode of CC. Indie Spotlight, um, this is Master Abbott signing out from Capsule, computers.com.au. Uh, if you like this, leave a message at the bottom of the YouTube channel. Um, and if you want to see more, let us know because I wouldn't mind running through a few more chapters of the game if everyone's interested in uh, listening to it and watching it. So, thank you very much for watching and signing out right now. <laughs>